Hello, I'm David Wormsey. This video is not so much a tutorial, although I hope you find something new here. It's more of a demonstration of something that I'm still working on, and I'm trying to gauge whether it would be of value to others, whether I should spend some more time on it. Very much a part of my Beaver Junction project, which is a plugin with various working templates that go with videos that I make. And the idea is that you can install those templates, take the code that's there, and then chuck away the plugin at the end and if you did install that plugin you probably saw there is this page template called homepage framework one which is a kind of ugly wireframe and doesn't do much but this potentially could underpin everything that I do with this beaver junction plugin but it may not and it's a, hard to explain this so I'll probably need to do this over two videos what I want to do in this one is to just quickly show you me using it to see if you can imagine it might be something that you would work with. So I'm going to skirt over things, probably going to trip up over myself quite a lot as I've just done already. Okay, so if you do have the plugin installed and you want you to work along with this, then you probably want to update because I've changed things quite a bit. Okay. Let me go over to my demo site here. So I'm on a site that's got the light version of Beaver Builder on it. And my plugin's installed, of course. So you'll find this template under templates, wireframes, and it's the only one. Little tip, if you're adding this to your page, then do a hard refresh of your browser because there's some CSS in files and it doesn't show properly until you've done that. And what we're doing here is that we have the header and the footer within the template. So what I've done on the theme that's used here is I've disabled header and footer on this particular page. Something I will mention, although it's a bit off the topic, is if you didn't notice this, because not much was said about it, and I think it's been around for maybe just over a year, if you are using headers and footers in Beaver Builder and you're not using Thema already, you're just replacing the head and the footer. You can mark up the headers and footers correctly now because you've got this option under the row settings. So you can mark up the content correctly. Anyway, that's not what I'm here for. I'm just gonna do one more adjustment because I'm using the light version. It doesn't have the menu module. So I'm using menu widget. So I'm just gonna set that in place and turn that on. And I've added a selector actually here. This is just a menu item. So I've made it look button-like and I've referenced it in my CSS. And that's what the rest is about. Now I'll cover this in another video. This is trying to do two jobs. So these things where there's little asterisks, these are reminders of things, the type of content you might want to put in on a home page. And this has been very much influenced by, well, various marketeers out there and conversion experts, but particularly I point clients to things that I've got in links here to Donald Miller. There's some free videos, it's about 10 minutes, which explain the key things about a home page, what needs to be there, how it needs to be presented for clarity. And there's also another great video about 45 minutes watertight marketing. Again, another book, uh, wonderful content. So I point people to that. Anyway, that's not what I'm doing today. I'll cover that in a moment. What I want to draw your attention to is that these page templates are marked up with class selectors in place so I can add CSS to them. So in some ways, there's nothing new here Effectively, there's no different if you were a theme author or you worked with those themes where you would style them, they would already have their selectors in, in the parts of the page and then you would use your styles.css to style all of those. Well, I'm bringing the same concept into the page itself here because I think there are a few little benefits with doing it and combining it with Beaver Builder. Okay, so what I've done, I won't go over it all, on each of these, and I've tried to mark it up so it's clear. So header has a header, heading row, header row, I can't remember what it's called. Here I've marked this one up, this is the hero row. So I have in my row, we have hero row. Let me just show you this. And advanced, there we are, we have hero row. And we have the same for the columns. So. Uh, this is a hero column one, hero column two. If I go into the advanced, we've done that. And it's the same for all the other things. So I've got a content row, content columns, benefit row and benefit columns. Then we've got, what else have we got? We've got a second content row. So we can, we've got a format so we can get, add in depending on how many of these are needed on a page. 
Then we've got feature row, exactly the same thing with columns, testimonials, um, social proof, call to action, and contact row. Now, you might not need all of these on every page, but they're there. Now, with all of this set up in place, it means I can do the styling from the page style sheet. And I can bring that up by going to, I'm on a PC, so it's control and Y. You can get it from the menu over here, but the shortcut keys are really handy for this. So what I've done is I've put some basic styling and some comments to help me along the way for each of these sections. Now, what's quite nice about this editor, which I didn't know for some time, uh, it's an editor that exists outside of Beaver Builder called Ace. But what you can do is when you're in that, you can go Control and F if your PC, whatever the, the Mac one is, you'll know. And you can bring up the search. And even better, you can add this and you can search and replace, which is really cool. And that's what I'm going to use here. I'm not going to go into detail over the code. Just want to see if you think you can imagine this might be quite handy. So what I've done and what I typically do is I'll use something like uh, coolers.co to find some colors and I've done that here but what I can do is I've already got one another selection of colors which I just pulled up over here so I'm just going to change these now this isn't uh, well planned particularly so this might look quite ugly but let's just do it let's do a, a bit of changing out some of the colors so let's change out our red we've got the red on the footer on the side on the head over here and I know what the what the uh, hexadecimal value is. Okay, so I'm going to control and F and put this in. I'm going to put in my color here. And then I shall go over and then we'll take this one and go back. And it's picked up on the eight of those, so we should be good. Let's go and change all that. So there we are. So we've just setting the new colors here. Let's do the same now with my buttons over here. Um, I'm going to take that. Now they're all black, but it's okay because I've put the headers and the body text as darker gray, so they look black, but they're not. Okay, so we do that. Let's go and pick our color. I want something bright-ish. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. As we can see, it's already picked out seven of the black there. Let's swap that over and there we are. So I've got that one working. So all my buttons now are there and the bottom there. Let's do a little bit more. This could get a bit tedious for you. So there's a soft background. Actually, let me just take that. I'm going to change another sort of accent color. So there's these areas. Uh, this may not look good but I'm gonna change this for those areas are this one, this gray. Hopefully it's picked up on those. Yep, let's go. I think I'll scroll down so you can see that, so I can see actually. Okay, we've changed that. Yeah, hmm, not the best, but you get the idea. Let's just do one more of these. Um, so I've got a soft gray over here. This is really going to ruin it, going through my alternative rows. I'm going to swap that out for something dark now. So let me take this out, pop this in, and we'll go for this color. And, aha, there we are. So as you can see, I have to do some other changes here, but this is the kind of idea behind this. To be able to set these things up so I can just change the shape. Now, what I can do, you know, the whole look of the page looks different now is just for the colors, but obviously I want to do other things. Let me go maybe do the fonts next. Uh, I should have prepared this a lot better. So yeah, I've got the fonts here. So I start off with a load of global page things so that I have my buttons and my font sizes here. I've also marked these up as header ones, header twos. So you can see in a kind of condensed area, let's just find this. You can see a number of the different sizes here. So you might want to just adjust these here. That's what I've set up. So I can just go around and set them up, but I'll probably do that as soon as I've picked my font. 
And how I've done this, because if you install this, you'll see the Dosis font and Lato as well, because I've already selected them. I've called them up from Google by selecting them here, just in the hero row. You probably need to add in more weights, but font weights, but here I'm doing it on this. Let's go to the styles and we can see Dosis. So it's the only place where I'm using the page builder to collect that. The rest of it is done by the CSS. So I'm gonna change this to um, pass, I always forget, yeah, Pacifico, that's it, that's really extreme font. So I'm going to put that in there and save it. So that's called up, and if I go back, whoops, did that wrong, if I go there, and go into where I had Dosis on my headers, I need to spell this right, Pacifico. Correct. Okay, so we found that this has gone through. You can see it on the header, it looks terrible there. Okay, let's just do some changes. So this is the idea. We can just go in while I've set some things up and change some of the basics there. It's a bit heavy. Let's see, I didn't bring in another font weight, but it'll maybe take that. Okay, not so bad, that's probably a bit too light. Let's just go for five, okay. And then I don't like that, it's not gonna work. But I can get around that quite easily. So let's say I've got Lato called already over here for the rest of the body text. So I'm just going to swap that one out here for my H5. Okay, and there we are, that's straightened that out. Let's just take, so something I'm doing here it's like I'm using these images here. So I put a, a round on this. This is my testimonial side. Let me just go over here. If I go to test, I'm going to find it. So you can see I put the images, I put a border radius, I'm making those round. If I replace those with proper images, then they're going to be there. And that reminds me, the images. I think this is really cool, something I found. Maybe you know about it already, but it's fairly new to me. Placeholder.com. This is what's making all of my images. So if we go over to this, what you can do is you, you reference their URL here and you can set the size of your image. So if you're setting out a page perhaps for a client and you know you've got an idea of how it's gonna work with the images, you can kind of put them in and you can put in your own colors and you can put in your own text over here. So if I want to change this to a black, I can just put, whoops, let's actually use zeros, that would help. And you can put in the full hexadecimal value over here and that gray isn't showing up so I can put a white there. So I think it's really cool and you can change the shapes and you know hint at some color that might be there. So if you think that it's gonna be very green images that are gonna go in, you could kind of put that there to get some kind of feel for how the page is looking. So I think that's probably enough to cover the, the basics of what this page is doing. Where I want to take this further is to extend upon this with other templates. So I can show you this. I've got one example of this. So we've got this featured row here. So I want to make up a new template. And I found this, that if you're wondering why you've got these um, extra templates, which I created, this handyman, there's another one called um, Animal Farm or something. This was my early attempts to try and work from one template to get different designs. And I realized very quickly that I didn't want the same layout all the time like this for features that wasn't gonna work for me and it took a lot of time. So what I thought would be a better way of doing it is to just create rows. We have something very similar to it. Let me go to the right place. So I've created one and they are literally blank with the, the, the placeholder image there. But what I can do is because the styling is on the page, it's gonna take the style in here. So I can just do that and work with it. So if I've got a load of the layouts properly, I'm separating the kind of styling, the main styling from the layout styling, uh, which I quite like, and that's the kind of idea. So there we are. I don't know how much use it will be to many. It's certainly gonna be the way that I'm gonna be working going forward. There's lots of good reasons, but I think I'm gonna cover those in the 
next video. Anyway, thank you. Sorry it was a little bit rambling. Um, I really do thank you for your time and I'd love some feedback on this. But if you did find the video um, helpful, then as always, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks very much. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.